Welcome to this Walkera Runner 250 quick tip. This is something that I need to say a couple of thanks for. Um, one of my subscribers clued me into this and it's about how you can connect and see the settings on this using classic multi-Wii technology. Now, I knew I liked the way that this thing flew, but now I know why, because it's running a multi-Wii version of the code. Thanks again to Banggood for sending this frame to me to play with. There's a link in the description if you're interested in finding out more. So what is multi-Wii? Well, multi-Wii is a series of boards that have been around for a very long time now. We're on about version 2.4 of the code. Uh, this is actually running 2.2, which is a little bit older, which is actually one of my favorite versions. And multi-Wii is an 8-bit platform typically, and uh, it's the basis for things like base flight and cling flight, things like the NASA 32 and running to the CC3D. So it's a great technology, and it has a fantastic implementation of things like angle horizon mode and also things like GPS modes. So now I know this is a implementation of multi-Wii, I'm a little bit disappointed that they haven't gone to the trouble of popping on some form of little GPS on here so that we could have had a GPS hold or even better a GPS return to home function. Because on multi-Wii those two functions work beautifully and I've made lots of quads with those two features on and they've all performed great. But what I want to do in this video is just show you how you get hold of the multi-Wii code and then how you plug in and connect to the Runner 250 to have a look at how it's set up. Now I would exercise extreme caution when you're doing this. The challenge with multi-Wii is that you should always be using the graphical user interface on your computer that matches the same version as the multi-Wii code here on the board. So that's one of the caveats and I'll talk about that again later on. And the other thing we need to be careful of here is that Walkera have not released any software for you to talk directly to the flight controller. So I'm guessing that what we're doing isn't necessarily supported. In which case, I'd always say use extreme caution when you're doing this. Don't write anything back to the board unless you're having a problem. And this isn't going to allow us to update the firmware or change anything really, apart from a couple of basic settings. But I would always make sure that before you change anything, you're making a note of how it is shipped to you before you start playing with things so you can always set it back. So what we'll do is we'll jump onto the netbook and we'll actually talk about how we set all this stuff up. I will draw your attention to the USB port that's at the side of the flight controller on top of the Runner 250. It's one of the little micro USB cables, so you will need one of those to plug it into your computer. The nice thing about the multi-Wii code is that it actually comes in lots and lots of different versions. So not only will it run on a PC, but it'll run on uh, Linux, Mac, and all kinds of other stuff as well. Okay, let's fire up the netbook, have a look at where we get the multi-Wii GUI config file from so we can actually look at this thing via the Windows desktop and set it up. The first thing we need to do is to download the multi-Wii graphical user interface that we're going to install here on our PC that will allow us to see what's going on with the model. So the way you get hold of that is if I just uh, open Internet Explorer, you will need to go to code.google.com slash p slash multi-Wii but if you Google for multi-Wii code, download, Google, you'll find this page. I'll put that link in the description to make it easier. And here are all the versions of MultiWii going back quite a way. Now the one that we need to download to use with the Walkera Runner is actually version 2.2 and that's because it's version 2.2 of the software that's actually installed running on there right now. So we're going to click on MultiWii 2.2, it'll ask us if we want to save it we're going to just save it onto the desktop and there we are we now have it now what it's actually appearing as is a zip file so if I just double click on the zip file you'll see all the contents which is a change log which tells you what was new in version 2.2 from the previous versions and then we have two directories one called MultiWii Conf which is the one we want and one called MultiWii now I'm just going to drag MultiWii Conf out of here because that's the one we actually are interested in once that's on the desktop I'm going to double click it 
and in here we have all the different versions of the application that we can run and the really nice thing about MultiWi is it's available on lots of different platforms so Linux 32 and 64-bit, Mac operating systems, Windows etc. Now we are a 32-bit Windows machine here so we're just going to go into that folder and click on MultiWi Conf. So now we've got our multi-week conf of the right version, we can actually have a look at what's going on on the model. The first thing we have to do is actually plug it in and power it up. If you don't power it up, then although it will connect, you won't be able to see any of the readings. So although this is running multi-week code, this isn't a normal multi-week. If it was, we would be able to power it from the USB connector and we'd be able to see what was going on. So I would always recommend, First thing, power on your radio, make sure that that's sat ready to go, and then let's plug our model in. For extra safety, first couple of times you do this, I would also recommend just take your props off. If anything wacky happens, then you're going to be safe. Now, I've done this a couple of times, so I'm reasonably confident. So let me plug it in and power it up. There we go. So, now what we'll do then is we'll actually plug the USB cable into the computer. So there's the Walkera. Now, on the computer, if it's the first time that you've installed the Walkera, it will go away and find the uh, bits and pieces and automatically configure them. You'll also see here that the lights are on. Now, this isn't showing us that it's armed. It just seems to be some kind of indicator that there's communication happening. So I'm going to open MultiWi Conf. So we're going to have that Windows 32 version again. Let me just open it. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the port that this thing's appeared on. And we're going to have a look at what we can actually see. So it's COM35 we're on here. So we're going to click on that. We're going to click Read and Start and here's all the information. And you can see that now the lights are doing things again at the back of the craft. Now here we have the view onto the actual craft itself. You can see here that it's actually saying it's um, version 2.2 of the MultiWi code. MultiWi by default automatically stamps the version of the code up on here. So it's always a good idea to double check that the version you're looking at corresponds with the MultiWi GUI that you're playing with. A couple of things on here I'll point out. First of all, you can see that the accelerometers, magnetometer and GPS is also configured. So although this thing doesn't have a GPS fitted, Walkera have obviously considered that and it's actually been set up so that a GPS could be added. The other weird thing here is that the magnetometer is jumping around an awful lot. Now, if I get braver later on, I might actually calibrate the magnetometer on here just to see how that helps. But you'll notice that this little graphic down here, as I move the craft, you can see the artificial horizon moving, which is great. But actually, what's um, happening is this little heading is flicking around. And I don't know whether that's why Walkera haven't released the GPS yet, uh, because the, the heading isn't great. Um, I'm actually slightly left of north right now, and it's, uh, it's flicking around in a slightly weird way. So I might calibrate the magnetometer, but I'll, I'll be a bit more careful with that. We can now see uh, some of the settings. So this is how the PIDs have been set. I would recommend that you screenshot this display and you make sure that you are saving this. So if anything ever happens, you can set everything back. And as I flick my modes, you can see that Auxiliary 1 is going from Angle, which is the self-level mode, which is the default one. And as I turn it up and it goes into the third position, into High, you can see that it disables all of the modes. So now we're basically in rate mode and that's how it works. So if you watch my auxiliary one channel, drop back down. There we go, the angle is turning on. We can also see the rates here as well, as well as the PID settings. Now we should never have to touch any of these because Walkera have carefully gone through and set them up. But you can actually see here the rates. Now the rates are how quickly things change. And nicely, Walkera have actually set a nice high rate on the yaw or the rudder axis, which for me is where it needs to be. I always find the multi wheels are a little slow around the yaw axis, so you do need to give them a good solid rate. 
the only other thing that we could potentially do in here while we're having a look, which is very useful, is here we can see the values for our pitch, which is our elevator. If I move that up and down, there we are, we can see it moving. We can see roll, which is our aileron, left and right. And we can see yaw, which is our rudder. We see it moving as well. Let me just make sure it isn't armed. There we go. Now you can see it's settling back. It's very useful while you are in here, particularly if you're using your own computer radio, to adjust the sub trim points to get all of these numbers as close to 1500 as you can. Because any deviation from 1500 from these numbers, pitch, roll, and yaw, will be read by the flight controller as a command. Hopefully that's interesting to those of you that wanted to see a little bit under the covers with a Walkera. So the trick is definitely make sure it's powered by the battery. I would always have your radio powered up first. Make sure that your props are off if you haven't done this a couple of times before or if you're not sure, take them off for safety. And then make sure that you have the right version of multi week Conf. You need to run the same version of multi week Conf as the version of multi week that's running on the board itself. And um, then you can come in here and I'd use it if for nothing else, just to make sure that your middle channel values are as close to 1500 as you can possibly get. Again, extreme caution here. This is not something that Walkera have talked about. It's something that's kind of been discovered by the community. So exercise extreme caution. And I wouldn't write anything back to the board at all, unless you were happy to take the risk that something might go wrong and you might end up uh, bricking your flight controller. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and happy flying.